so you know what's really interesting is that you are aware that you've created this shell we'll just call it a shell and that you have this shell and you're using this shell to cope with things that happened that were painful and traumatic and triggering and continue to be so on some levels and you know that the shell isn't healthy and you use it anyway and this is coping mechanism 101 and each and every one of you has at least one of these that you do the exact same damn thing with so this is a very brave example that you're giving for everyone to learn from and we mean everyone because the people who hear this are going to go oh I've got one of those too so we want to really thank you for being so forthright about it now this is exactly what what is true now is good at helping you with because you say what is true now and it's what is true now is that I feel like I'm making choices around my physical body that are attempting to keep me safe and secure but aren't actually giving me safety and security so if you make other choices now this is what tends to happen is somebody will say I feel like I'm overweight so I'm going to exercise or I'm going to change my diet yippee right and then they say why do I lose the weight and gain it, lose the weight and gain it, lose the weight and gain it, lose the weight and gain it? It's because there's an energetic picture that is really running the show and the amount of food you eat and the amount of exercise you get is absolutely irrelevant right. because the energetic picture is far more powerful than any of that other stuff. Yeah, I've not been able to pierce that. Yeah, so the energetic yeah, picture okay. that we're looking at with you is the idea that my body shape is giving me security. That's what you're telling yourself. Mm -hmm. you, you admitted it? Mm -hmm. Okay. The truth is, my body shape is keeping me from experiencing bliss. And not so much as my body shape, but my coping mechanism for the triggers that I'm using the body shape to cover up is what's in the way of me experiencing bliss. So it's the coping mechanism that we want to look at. So the temptation to say, oh, I think a man just looked at me. I don't want him to look at me. Doesn't he see that I'm overweight? He shouldn't be looking at me. Right? To hide behind the, tru the truth, in quotes, that you've established as, oh, I don't want to be around my family, so I need to make sure that, that I'm unattractive to them or that I make lifestyle choices they don't agree with so they won't talk to me or they won't like me or they won't understand me. I've got to make sure they think I'm weird so that they don't want to talk to me instead of just being able to say I know who I am and I don't care what they think and it's okay for me not to care what they think because their reaction to me isn't going to tell me who I am my internal knowing of myself tells me who I am your internal knowing of yourself tells you who you are so your internal knowing is I experienced this thing in my youth that was very traumatic and in order to keep it from happening again I am doing certain things that aren't contributing to my experience of bliss. The reality is now you're a big grown up woman and the chances of that happening again are very slim. The chances of it happening exactly the way it happened before is zero. And you don't need to create coping mechanisms to prevent it from happening again. What you want to look at is how you can acknowledge triggers in a new way in order to transform the outcome of those triggers. So now you get a trigger where a man looks at you and you're triggered by your abuse from your childhood. What we want to look at is a man looks at you and you say, yeah, you know, my inner self is pretty amazing and my external self is starting to shift to reflect the truth of me. So of course he's going to look at me because not every man is out to abuse you physically. There are men out there who are just interested in seeing light and seeing positivity and seeing curiosity and seeing consciousness. And you're able to say, yes, he's seeing the true of me or he's getting a glimmer of the true of me, truth of me, rather than he's looking to take advantage of me in some way. And if your family comes around in some way, shape, or form, you say, you know, hey, am I even interested in you people? And if you're not, it doesn't mean you have to somehow be bad so they don't like you. 
It's I am past needing your approval. I am past needing anyone's approval outside of my own self and outside of the expression of my internal journey externalized. So when you find yourself getting dressed or eating or exercising or whatever you do where you sense your physical form being a shape you're not happy with, one of the first things you have to do is take responsibility for the moment and say, this is who I am now. Until you can say yes to the moment, you can't change it. So yes, this is who I am now. This is how I have chosen to handle this situation up till now. And I'm going to accept as a creator the outcome. And I'm going to acknowledge how powerfully I actually created this situation. Look at how much creation I did. Okay, I'm a great creator. I'm ready to create something else. So you get triggered by your shape, you get triggered by whatever your lack of endurance or your voice or whatever gets triggered. And the trigger, instead of taking you to, that's right, how bad do I suck for having to got myself into this shitty situation? The trigger goes into, that's right, I'm ready for the physical expression of me to reflect the truth of me that I'm knowing now. And, you know, it's choose and choose again, and it's challenging. But, you know, everyone's being pushed on the level where they're most experiencing triggers. And this apparently is yours, is your physical expression. Other people, it's money, relationships, family, wherever it is, this is yours. So it's choose and choose again as you're triggered by your physical expression for a physical expression that more accurately reflects the inner knowing that you are aware of. And don't beat yourself up about the fact that maybe you don't know what the inner knowing is. You know at least your inner knowing is, I'm a creator and I'm ready to create something new. I've learned enough about this, thank you. Start there, because that's the truth. And then it's consciousness, willingness to look at my shit, willingness to be aware of my triggers, willingness, willingness, willingness. So the minimum is, I am willing to accept responsibility for the state I'm in and to have the inner truth of me as it's revealed, as I learn it, to also be expressed physically. Yeah, you can do that. I actually felt that here. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. Yeah. I really needed that, I really wanted that. Yes, you did, or yeah. else it couldn't have come out. Yeah, see, and that's the truth of you. See, the truth of you isn't this physical body shape that you're uncomfortable with. The truth of you is the person who can sit here in a circle of people and ask that deep personal question and say, I need the answer. That's who you are. You're not someone who hides from the world behind a body shape that's socially unacceptable to most people. No, that's not who you are. The truth of you are is a very brave and courageous woman who's doing her absolute best to become a conscious being and is willing to say, I know where I'm fucked up and I want it to change. That is who you are. Thank you for seeing me. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. Yeah. So you can try to hide, but I your light is too bright. <laughs> your light is too bright. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It works against all that too. Exactly. It's really like a mind fuck. Yeah, basically it is. You guys are really good at mind fucks. <laughs> yeah, you guys are incredibly talented mind fuckers. Um, that'd be a good t-shirt. I am an incredibly talented mind fucker. Um, at least we're good at something. <laughs> hey, there you go. At least we're good at something. Um,